Hello and welcome to Talking Defense, Raphael's Defense Magazine. Every program is dedicated to a different subject with all relevant expert data and aspects here in the studio and from around the world. And today, AI Autonomous Brain, solving the indoor challenge. Today I'm joined by uh, two of our real marketing and BD manager innovation programs and Noam Barak, head of Entrepreneur and Innovation Center. Thank you gentlemen for joining me today. So Bar, we see so many changes in the battlefield and everything happens so fast and you have to adapt to that. Yes, exactly right. And Raphael is adapting by making systems today using the multi-domain capabilities from space to, the, to land. Now, today we're going to talk about a very interesting challenge in the battlefield, the indoor challenge. The indoor challenge itself takes actually soldiers inside of a city. They need to look into an indoor area which they do not know anything about because the intelligence we have today is based on air. From the air, you cannot see what's inside the buildings. When you need to go inside the building, you're looking in an area that you don't know at all. You're risking soldiers. And what we're looking to do is make systems which can take the technologies that Raphael have today. Raphael has today technologies from the computer vision world, a lot of sensors and systems, and also technologies in the combat artificial intelligence environment. We took all of these types of technologies that we're using on systems today, for example, Fireweaver, which we'll talk about later, and we put all of these technologies in this small brain that you can see over here focusing on small drones that can map out the battlefield, the indoor battlefield, and give the intelligence to the soldiers to solve that operational challenge. So you, you send that small toy inside, instead of send, sending a soldier or a few toys like that, and you get the, everything you need outside, and then you can plan what you want to do, right? Exactly right. I will refer to Noam to answer and uh, give uh, more information. So Noam, let's speak about uh, the, the technological challenges because, you know, <coughs> it's a small toy, but yeah. it has lots of brain inside and, and it is a huge technological uh, 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 challenge to bridge. Mm -hmm. Yes, so let's think about a soldier for a second that is about to enter the indo combat environment. Now, it, it, it doesn't have any GPS and yet it needs to navigate inside an unknown maze. Um, one more thing that um, is challenged by is the light. For example, he has a direct sunlight through the windows while he needs to operate in full darkness inside. He has static and dynamic obstacles that um, interrupt his movement and, uh, and more, he has a lack of communication. Lack of communication in indoor is a big problem. Think about a concrete room when you can't communicate and all of these challenges make this environment very risky for our soldiers, and we want to change it. So, so what do you do? I mean, it sounds very simple. Mm -hmm. You want to change it, you bring it, uh, t the technology, but how it is done? Yeah, so, so as Barr mentioned, our system has one goal. We want to save soldiers' life. What we did, we looked on the human brain, and we mimic, mimic the human brain. For example, we can see, we can talk, we can feel, we can touch, and everything is being fused in our brain and computed there. So we did the same with our platform. This small platform is integrated with artificial intelligence algorithms and low-power hardware. We took everything inside of it and makes this little guy very, very smart inside. What do I mean by smart? I mean that this little guy is autonomous. He can maneuver at indoors by himself, take his own decision. Should I turn left? Should I turn right inside of it? And um, also he produces a 2D mapping and a 3D reconstruction, um, but not only a mapping, it does a semantic mapping. And I want to tell you, uh, you have, what, is, what do I mean by semantic mapping? Semantic means that I can, um, that this platform can by itself recognize and detect objects, chairs, tables, weapons, and even persons. Everything is being done 
in this little brain. And everything is being sent back. So, and then when soldiers enter the building, they will know better what expects them? Yeah, so this is a, uh, a, a, this is a game changer platform. Not o when, it, when there is an, a good communication, it can send data. But then again, when you have lack of communication, it holds all the information in his brain, and when he can, he sends this information. So think about a group of soldiers that is about to enter the most risky place they can, they can uh, be at. It's the difference between knowing and not knowing. And not knowing. So everything now is known. You know what, wh where to turn. You have the full map. Yes. So, Bar, you've mentioned that y you are part of Rafael, and Rafael yeah. does everything from space to land. Yeah. What's the benefit, for example, uh, in being part of Rafael into that little toy? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, Rafael has many systems today looking in the multi-domain battlefield that can actually use this type of platform and encompass it inside. For example, the next generation combat vehicle suite, which is a new uh, concept that Rafael is making, looking into adapting multiple systems into a combat vehicle into a one holistic solution. So imagine having, let's say 10, even 20 of these little guys on an armor fighting vehicle, sending them into a building. The soldier does not even need to go out. He sees everything into that armor fighting vehicle, and you're looking into giving him that intelligence he needs. Intelligence, which, by the way, includes uh, automatic target recognition, which we're doing from Rafa in Rafael from today from aerial platforms, land platforms, and now even these little guys can do automatic target recognition and give you understanding of which weapons or people are inside the building. Obviously, you're looking at the IDF because you both served at the IDF. Yeah. You have <laughs> friends, families, etc., etc. So when you say saving soldiers' life, you look at home. Yeah. But what's the international potential for that? Because I, I bet on one hand, it's Israeli technology, so it's very delicate. On the other hand, the whole world is a battlefield and potential clients. Well, that's a, another great question. First of all, it's not even army. It's not even the IDF. It's much more than that. You can use these for civilian applications as well. For Crime. example, imagine right now a building collapses, okay, and you want small sensors to go into these ruins and find people inside. For a home front command, for example. Exactly. You cannot fly a drone inside in a sophisticated area today with your manual controls. But this automated system, since it's autonomous and understands its environment, can go into hard areas. So you're looking at army, you're looking at, uh, at uh, a, exactly homeland, homeland security, security, police, and you're looking also at rescue squads and other stuff like that that can benefit from these systems. Uh, another thing that uh, you can add is looking into an holistic solution like Fireweaver, for example, which connects all the systems in the battlefield. So imagine this small drone goes inside a building and then finds a target and it's being sent to another sensor or system in an aerial platform that recognizes and that. And Noam, how easy is it to, de to deploy? Because I bet someone sees, is, sees us now in the Far East or in Africa or in South, East America, uh, uh, and in South America and they say to themselves, OK, we want to get something like that, but it's too technological for us. So is it complicated or is it smart but simple? Yeah, well, one, one of the interesting things about it, think about Bar mentioned 10 and 20 platforms, but we want to operate all of them um, using a single soldier. It's a big challenge. We want the soldier to do simple tasks so he gets only one tablet. And by um, clicking with his finger, he maneuvers and controls this platform. These platforms don't need to be controlled anymore. They know what to do. Now the controlling in the, uh, the, the system is in the mission level. Fascinating. I'll take two. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Bar, Noam, thank you so much for joining me. And that, uh, that's all from us for today. We'll be back shortly with another edition of Talking Defense. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned. Bye-bye.